Well, hello and welcome. There's a slightly different spread on the table than what you're usually familiar with with my channel. However, there is a story to be told here. To make that story as short as possible, I have a Ruger American Ranch in 5.56. That's my go-to rifle. I shot Will and Brutality with it and have been shooting it basically non-stop for the last 60 or so years with a P4XI 1-4 on top. I had a Howa Mini Action Chambered in 223 that I built for precision. That had a three-port break on it and was great. However, it only liked one type of ammunition, and as a result of that, it wasn't really feasible in today's market to just continue shooting it, especially when that ammunition was really expensive. I ended up selling that because my Ruger will eat just about anything I put through it and shoot it very, very well. Not perfect, but even on fairly budget-minded ammunition, 60 cents a round or so, it'll shoot it within about an inch, and that's more than accurate for me for anything precision-oriented. As a result, I sold my Hawa, and I decided, hey, I have my Miopta Optica 63-18 sitting on my shelf collecting dust. Let me get two QD mounts for both those optics and throw them on my Ruger, depending on my mood or what I, or how I want to shoot it that day. So, with that, everything was great. Except I realized that the A2 flash shot that I've had on the gun for a very long time, which is very good at mitigating flash, is not good at muzzle control. And it wasn't apparent until around 10x or more shooting at smaller targets beyond 200 yards at just how much the gun bounces. There's very little muzzle control. Now, it's not recoil necessarily. It's whenever I shoot off a bipod and I'm shooting at distance, the whole gun goes like this. Bang. 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 I can control the gun perfectly fine, but there's just weird harmonics and the whole gun just sort of bounces. And it's very jarring for me as the shooter to keep an eye, number one, on calling my hits or misses and being able to produce very fast follow-up shots. So, as a result, I decided to pull out this Jerry Mitchell three-port break, which is very similar to the three-port break I had on my Hawa, throw it on the Ruger and see how it did. And the whole rifle did exactly what I expected it to do. And every time you'd shoot, it would go bang, bang, and you sort of just like buzz in your hand, allowing the ability for follow-up shots and calling your shots extremely, extremely easily. But I didn't want my Ruger just to have a three-port break on it, because number one, they're extremely jarring for you as the shooter and people around you. And they do nothing to mitigate flash, as you will soon see. Flash just goes wildly out to each side. But I love how much control it offers. But I still want flash mitigation. So, that is why these two are going to be my control, because both of these are excellent at their respective duties, flash hiding and controlling the muzzle. So these are going to be my benchmark for the rest of these muzzle devices. Now, how did I come to get the rest of the muzzle devices, you might ask? Well, it's very simple. The first two I bought off my own research and finding what I think would, be, would serve my purposes perfectly well. The rest of them were sent in graciously by Patreon provider Dave. When I had originally started this conversation with my private Telegram chat and all my top supporters, Dave reached out to me privately and said, hey, I got a bunch of muzzle devices that are just collecting dust. Do you want them? And before I could even say yes to that question, he had already sent them out. So Dave, top marks. Anywho, from left to right, we're going to be starting with a bare muzzle. Then going to the A2 flash hider, the Jerry Mitchell 3-port brake, the 2A3T comp, the Strike Industries J comp, the CZ 9mm Scorpion brake, then we have the Brake Arms 2-port and 3-port muzzle brakes, as well as their 3-prong flash hider, and this guy, which is a blast diverter. So if you are using these or this and you want the blast to go forward, you just screw this on the front, which is really nice. A random blast diverter, which I do not know the make, model, or any sort of specs about it, neither did Dave, so if you know any more information about this particular model, please let me know in the comment section below. From there, we have the Venom Defense Hybrid Micro Brake and the VG6 Epsilon with the cage. This, of course, is the three-prong brake arms flash hider. And there's your spread. This is not going to be a definitive review. No, no, this is just a sampling of what I could get my hands on to do this review with. However, I do think if any of these are going to be really good, it's going to be probably those guys. But again, time will tell. Now, the way I'm going to find out how well these work is very simple. I have two cameras set up, as well as a grading system I'm going to operate on. Now, the grading system is very simple. One is low, five is high. And there's going to be three categories that I'm going to be grading them on. One's going to be flash reduction, then muzzle control, not necessarily felt recoil, but how well the gun sta is stable. And then shooter comfort, which is mostly going to be just noise and percussion. Because I don't want to have to shoot this thing with double ears all the time if I can avoid it. 
Not only that, I'm also really mindful of how loud it is for other people on either side of me. My range can be pretty cramped sometimes, and the last thing I want to do is be that guy shooting a 3.38 LPM with a fucking giant fucking tank break on the front at 100 yards and not being able to hit the target properly. So at the very end, all of these will be graded on some sort of number account. Lowest possible combination would be 3. Highest combination possible would be 15. We'll factor price in there as well, but honestly, all of these are right around the same price point, with the exception of the A2 Birdcage is basically free on any upper you're going to get, and the VG6 Epsilon is about 80 bucks by itself. The cage is about another $80 or so. Other than that, they all fall in around $60 or less, which honestly isn't bad if it does the job it's supposed to do. Anyway, with that, let's get on to the testing. Alrighty, there's going to be a couple things you're going to take note of. Number one is going to be muzzle flash, it's going to be muzzle whip, how much the bipod moves back on that black cardboard, and the screen to the right, how much that's going to distort with every shot fired. Now, there is going to be a number grade, like I said. I'm going to shoot that off over here, but I will have a list at the very end showcasing what I think is the best. Now, this being the bare muzzle, it's free. Every gun comes with one. But what does a bare muzzle on a 16-inch 5.56 shooting steel-cased Wolf 55 grain military classic ammunition look like? Well, it's a giant fireball. How much of a giant fireball, you might ask? Well, it's going to look exactly like this. It's huge. Now, a couple things to note. Yes, it's a big fireball, so there's zero flash hiding. But more importantly than that, there's very little percussion, believe it or not. Those screens barely even moved. Now, the gun, if you look at the bipod, moves back quite a bit, but it's in a linear motion, so it's really not that uncontrollable. Overall grading on this is a 5. I'll give a breakdown at the end of the video. Next up is a standard A2 birdcage. These go for about 10 bucks, and odds are, if you're buying an AR-15 upper, it probably comes with one from factory. Now, it does a great job of killing flash, as you can see. There's very little minor amount that comes out, and there's almost no sidewards percussion. However, the ports being on top of an A2, I believe, forces the barrel down, especially when you're in the bipod, and that's what was giving me the bounce in my testing of it. Overall, this thing performs fairly well, and gets a 10 overall. So, honestly, not bad, especially for the price. Next up is the three-port Jerry Mitchell break. This thing does an amazing job of keeping the muzzle under control. However, you sacrifice a couple of things. And the first is going to be just percussion. Take note of the screen to the right when I shoot. It literally disappears and wraps around the wooden post that it's attached to. Ultimately, there isn't that much muzzle flash, a little bit coming out the sides, but it's just so painfully loud and obnoxious. Whether you're the shooter, or especially if you're standing next to the table or on the bench next door, it is just absurd. As a result, this gets a 9 overall. Next up is the T3 Compensator from 2A. This thing, from all my research, should have fit my bill perfectly. It's supposedly really good at hiding flash and controlling the muzzle. And as you're about to see, unlike the 3-port, it shoots the gases farther forward of the muzzle device. With the 3-port, if you didn't notice, it shoots the gas directly to the side. As a result, this is much less annoying for you, the shooter, and people around you. It also does a really good job of hiding flash. I'd say it's right on the tails of the A2. Not as good, but really, really close, and has much more control of the muzzle than the A2. But of course, it's not a 3-port either with muzzle control. But still, it gets a 12 out of 15. Next up is the J-Comp from Strike Industries. You can get this for about 45 bucks, and it looks really, really cool. Aside from looking more or less like a break, it does a pretty good job of mitigating flash as well. Unfortunately, look at the screening. Unlike the T3 that we just looked at, this pushes the gases a little bit farther behind itself, so it means that it is extremely loud for you, the shooter, and anyone else around you. However, this thing performs almost as good as a three-port break as far as controlling the muzzle. Overall, it gets a 9 out of 15. Next up is a CZ Scorpion 9mm muzzle brake. 
I don't know why he included it, but hey, why the hell not? I couldn't find a price for this, so your mileage may vary. As you can clearly see, it is very effective at pushing gases to the side, but it's not very effective at mitigating flash. In fact, it's really poor. It shoots a huge fireball at the front and the sides, probably because it's set for a 9mm, but either which way, it is very uncomfortable to shoot from all perspectives. This only gets a 6 out of possibly 15. Next up is the Brake Arms 2-Port Muzzle Brake. This thing, I couldn't find a price on. I believe it's discontinued. But still, if you find another 2-Port Brake that's got a very similar design to this, you should be able to understand how it's going to function. How it functions as a brake is actually very good, but it pushes so much air to the sides of the first port that it really increases the velocity of it, and it changes the sound profile as to you, the shooter, to a point where it's unbearable. It's frankly unnerving. Also, it shoots a giant fireball at the sides, so you will notice that with your non-dominant eye. Overall, this gets a 7 out of possibly 15 points. Screwing the brake arms blast diverter onto the 2-port gives us some pretty interesting results. It might surprise you, actually. That's right, you get a gigantic fireball out the front. It's so much so that it actually increases the velocity of how hard the rifle pushes back. The muzzle's kind of controlled, but it's got way more recoil. Overall, this gets only about 6 out of 15. It also costs around 30 bucks, which isn't bad if you want to turn your 16-inch AR into a cannon. Similar to its smaller brother, the 2-port, the 3-port is also discontinued. However, it does a much better job of mitigating recoil as well as flash. This performs much, much better. It's also much more enjoyable for the shooter because it has a much wider dispersion of the gas and it doesn't feel as obnoxious. As a result, this gets 10 out of 15 possible points. Putting the exact same diverter on the 3-port functions exactly as it did with the 2-port. It turns your soft shooting rifle into a cannon. It is just, I don't know why you do it other than you don't want to piss off people next to you, but I really don't think it's doing that job very well either. It gets the same 6 out of 15 points. On to the absolute no-name brand that I can find on this thing or any information regarding to this blast diverter. Please let me know in the comment section below if you know what the hell it is. Let's see how well just a diverter like this will work. It's actually pretty damn good. Way better than the other combination. This has much less flash, much less felt recoil, believe it or not. And it's much more enjoyable to shoot as far as a noise standpoint. This gets 9 out of 15. On to the worst performing muzzle device here, the Venom Defense Hybrid Micro Brake for 15 bucks. There's a reason why it's $15, because it does this. It creates a gigantic fireball that's so obnoxiously loud and absurd in every regard. If you're looking to have the biggest fireball possible, even bigger than having a bare muzzle, look no further. As a result, it's got to be said, this only gets about a 6 out of 15 points. For $80, you can have this VG6 Epsilon. It's had great reviews, and I had very high hopes for it given the price. It does an exceptional job of controlling the muzzle. Probably one of the best in this class. And it does a pretty good job with flash as well. Unfortunately, very similar to the 2-port, it puts so much noise into your skull and to the people around you that it's just, it can't be graded any higher than the 9 that it gets. If I can go any higher on the scale for muzzle control, it would have a 6.
But see, what about the cage that you can put on the VG6? You're absolutely right. It's another $80. But it does a much better job of changing the dynamic of the air coming out of the compensator. So much so that it makes it an absolute joy to shoot. But now you're talking about $160-ish, and you do see a little bit more flash. However, it's still much better than a bare Epsilon, and as a result, it gets an 11 out of 15. Up next is the Brake Arms 3 prong Flash Hider. You can find these for about 35 bucks, and it's gotta be said, this thing does a really good job of mitigating flash. However, it also does a surprisingly good job of controlling the muzzle. Not necessarily on recoil, but just stabilizing the muzzle. Unlike the A2 birdcage where the ports are mostly on top, the three prongs are symmetrical, and thus the gases come out in a very linear fashion, so the gun just pushes straight back, there's no bounce to it. Overall, this thing gets an 11 out of 15 and really surprised me. I didn't think I was going to like it that much. Last but certainly not least is the three-prong flash hider with that blast shield. As we've seen already, it diverts all of the energy going forward, so expect a lot more felt recoil on the shoulder. But unlike with the brakes, the flash hider still works fairly well at mitigating most of the flash, but we do see some flash coming out the front. It's okay, but it only gets about a 7 out of 15. Alrighty, results time. It's no surprise to anyone here that, judging from how I talked about it, the 2A T3 comp is, without a doubt, the best. It is the best overall package. Some definitely do a better job than others in one regard or the other, but I was looking for the best all-arounder. I'm not going to bother going through the rest of the list because it's pretty self-explanatory right there in front of you. But the fact that it's got a closed bottom, which means that when I'm prone, I'm not going to kick up a lot of dust in my face, it has a great, does a great job mitigating flash, controlling the muzzle, and because it somehow manages to push the gas a little bit farther forward, I think that's partly due to its design, because the rear holes are perpendicular to the bore, but the, they have reliefs on the front that you'll see right here, and I think the gases just come out and get automatically pushed forward because of drag and whatnot. It's the path of least resistance is out and forward, and it's just a combination that works extremely, extremely well. It's honestly the perfect muzzle device for me. If you're looking for something a little bit more niche for you, hopefully my guide will help you find exactly what you're looking for. I don't ever plan on taking this off unless I move to a free state, in which case I'd put a suppressor on this thing in a heartbeat. But alas, I'm not in a free state. Anywho, that's a story for another time. The last, very last thing I'm going to show you is going to be me in the seated position with my elbow on my knee, shooting my gun as fast as I can for four rounds with four iterations. On the very top is going to be a bare muzzle. Underneath that's going to be an A2 flash hider. Underneath that's going to be the three-point Jerry Mitchell break. And underneath that, the 3T. See which one I shoot a little bit faster. Before we get to that, though, thank you all very much for watching. And Dave, thank you so much for sending these in for review. I absolutely had a blast doing this, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. With that, thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible.
If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.